Hello everyone. In this video, we will solve 2017 question paper for UGC Net Computer Science Discipline. And if you want to download the presentation that is used in this video, then you can visit our website www.digimento.com. And over there, you can go to the download section. From the download section, you can download the presentation PPTs for this video, as well as you can also download the previous year UGC Net question papers. If you want to take the case course for UGC Net Computer Science or UGC Net Electronics Science, then you can visit our course section to get the fees details and to take the courses. Or you can also call us on the contact numbers provided above. So without any further delay, let us just start solving the question paper of 2017 UGC Net. I hope that uh, this video will be very helpful for you and uh, this will help you in your UGC Net exam preparation. For the complete video lectures, you can visit our website and this video uh, is available for every each and every one of you. So let us start. Question number 21 is, which of the following is true for computation time in insertion, deletion and finding maximum and minimum in the sorted array? So they are talking about the sorted array. Let's suppose one example and through with the uh, help of example, uh, we are going to perform these different operations. So let's suppose this is an array and this array is sorted initially, right? So first element, let's store one. Next element, let's store two. Then we are going to store four, then six, then seven, and this is eight. Okay. And this is the array A. Now, let's do some operation on this array. So, operations which are given in our questions are like insertion. And we have to find out the time complexity they are taking by performing these operations. So, the first operation is insertion. Let's suppose I want to insert, I want to insert element 3 in this sorted array. Right. So, where I am going to, you know, insert this element, this element 3, I am going to store here at this position, right? Because 3 is greater than 2 and 3 is less than 4. Then in that case, what will be the result? If I placed 3 here, so if I placed 3 here, then all the elements before this, you know, going to shift one position. Let's suppose the size of the array is more like this. Huh? So in that case, 3 is here, then 4 is here, then 5 is here, oh sorry, 6 is here, 7 is here, and 8 is here. Okay, so shift operation is going to happen after insertion. Right, so uh, uh, in a worst case, it will take order of n time because we insert it and then, you know, all the elements which is present after this, so the entire list going to shift right, right? So it will take order of n time. In the same case, deletion will going to happen. Hmm? So if the you know resultant array is like this: one, two, three, four, six, seven, and eight, and some space is there in the array. Now, if I want to you know delete this element, this key in this array, then what going to happen? Uh, this block is empty now. So all the list which is present after this will going to left shift, right? So the resultant array looks like one, two, three, because one space is left is you know empty here. So the left shift is going to happen. So six is here, seven is here, eight is here, and some empty blocks are present in the array. Okay. Now, so in the worst way, the deletion type will take order of n because in this case also the shifting of you know all the keys are going to be happen. Now, next one is is maximum. So let's suppose this is the array 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The size of the array is 9. Huh? Now, in this array, we want to find the maximum element. You know that this is a sorted array, so where the maximum element should be placed in the last position right so you can easily go to the last position and access the element and find the element so it will take only order of time in the same way minimum minimum key present in the array where it's going to be placed 
at the first position because it's a uh, you can say it's a sorted array and it's a no, uh, in the increasing order right in an increasing order so uh, the first minimum element place at this location so it also take the order of one time so correct answer is for insertion it will take order of n time for deletion also it will take order of n time maximum ke liye order of one and minimum ke liye order of one so option three is the right one now question number 22 the seven elements a b c d e f g are pushed into a stack in a reverse order in a reverse order means first we pushed g start from the g first we pushed g then we push f then we push uh, e and then we push uh, d and then we push C because they said that stack is popped uh, like this so push B and push A now come to the question the stack is popped five times and each element is inserted in a, into a cube right so this is my stack if this is my stack and push operation is like push G first push G then push F, push F into the stack, then push E, then we push E into the stack, then we push D, so D is here. Now the fifth one is push C because we are going to push in a reverse order. The order is initially is A, B, C, D, E, F, G and they are asking in a reverse order so we start from G, F. E, D, C, B, A. So next one is uh, C. So we push C into the stack. Then we push B and then we push A. So B is here and A is here. So first task is completed. Okay. We, ta uh, we uh, sorry. So we push all the elements into the stack in a reverse order. Now they are saying that the stack is popped five times and each element is inserted into a cube. It means that we five times pop karna hai stack mein se. 5 elements ko, 5 times means 5 elements which is present in the stack unhe hume pop karna hai aur insert karna hai q ke andar so this is my q and you know that stack is follow last in first out right and this is your q this is the front end and this is the rear end from the front end we are going to first in first out right we insert from here and we delete from here okay now they said the stack is popped five times so five times means first we pop a then we pop and each element is inserted into a cube okay uh, so we first we pop a then we insert it here then we pop b from the stack and we insert from the this side b is here then we pop c from the stack and we insert in the cube c then we pop D and we insert back into the Q. So D and then we pop E and we insert here in the Q. So five times is one, two, three, four, five. Five elements we are going to delete it in the stack. Okay. Now F and G are going to left in the stack. Now two elements are deleted from the Q. You know that from where we are going to delete it? From here first in first out so first a will come a is came so a is out and push back into the stack so we push it into the stack now again two elements are deleted now so we delete b also and uh, b is here and push back into the stack now one element is popped from the stack the popped item is what now we are going to pop so at the top of the stack which element is present p so we pop b from the stack so they are asking the name of the element so it's it's b okay so second is the answer now which of the following is a hip valid hip right you can see that the maximum value is present here you know that there are two types of hip min hip in which root not contain the minimum value compared to the your children's and uh, maximum hip means root not contain the maximum value now you can see that they are the min uh, maximum heap because the ma uh, maximum value is present at the root node 
right now we have to find out which one of the you know out of the four which one is the max heap right let's analyze one by one so 16 14 10 yes it is greater than from their child yes it is greater now see from here see this side so 4 and 7 14 is greater root node is greater to their children yes it is now here so 2 and 8 and 4 so root node should be greater than to their children's so 8 is greater than 4 right so this is not a heap tree condition not follow maximum heap condition valid in this case now let's see this tree now 16 is a root node it should be greater than the value which is present in their uh, child node so 14 and 10 16 is greater yes it follow now from here so 14 8 1 4 this is a root node they are the childs so 8 1 and 14 14 is greater so it follows now i'm at here so 2 and 4 and 8 yes root node contain the maximum value so it also follows now 8 1 14 it is greater 1 and 7 now see this is a root node this is a child child contains the max uh, highest value than the root so it violates the max heap condition so this is not a max heap or you can say heap so this is 16 14 10 right this will contain the maximum value 14 8 7 so 7 and 8 and 14 14 is greater 2 and 4 and 8 8 is greater root node contain the maximum value 1 and 7 yes this is right because the root node should contain the maximum value as compared to their child's now 10 9 3 10 is greater and it is present at the root node so so this follows the, all the max heap conditions so this is a max heap or you can say this is the heap valid heap heap so this is valid heap so option b is the right one so second option is right now question number 24 if h is chosen from a universal collection of hash functions and is used to hash n case into a table of size m where n is less than or equal to m the expected number of collision involving a particular key x is less than 1 1 by n 1 by m or n by n let's talk about the hashing first and then we find uh, what are the problems or uh, why the number of collision are more in case we are when we are using only one single hash function right so let's talk about the first hashing you know that in the data structure right data structure we perform some operations like uh, insertion deletion and searching let's talk about searching so if we talk about the different different data structures like arrays linked list binary search tree right like if we talk about the unsorted array it will take order of on n time and if we talk about the sorted array it will take order of log n time in the bst also the best case is order of log n time you can see that the average if we see the average then the best case searching time is order of log n time only right so we improved it in the hashing and uh, the hashing will take only the order of one time during the searching operation right first thing now ha hashing functionality is a mapping of you know the large numbered set of keys to a smaller set the, which is available in the, you know you can say it's a memory right? now let's take one example and see where the collision is going to be happen um the keys like so this is your memory let's suppose the blocks name is one two three four and five and so on so these are the blocks and some keys are there let's suppose the hash function is like this modulus of 10 so up to 10 is the size of the your memory now the first keys you are going to place in this is 121 now 121 modulus 10 we got one so we place 121 at the position of one right now let's suppose the next key is 132 and modulus 2 with 10 and we got 2 so at the position of 2 132 is going to be placed now the next one is 131 mod 10 and this is 1 so it means that 131 position is also here now this is a collision now it's collision going to be happen next is 151 161 all are placed in this block and the again and again collision is going to be happen this is because of because we are using a single hash function we are going to use a single hash function so to resolve this collision problem we you know we uh, some collision resolution techniques we are re already studied like open hashing or a closed hashing open hashing we are uh, studied about chaining when we uh, when 
more than one key want to play it placed at the single position then in that case some chaining is there right and open addressing we use like linear probing and quadratic probing in which we modified the keys now there is one more technique where uh, through which we are able to resolve this you know collision problem and the solution name is universal hashing universal hashing okay so uni uh, universal hashing states that that it's a very effective way to improve the situation of you know number of collision so to uh, here we are going to do that do is just changing the color and i'm writing here in the universal hashing we choose the hash function we choose the hash function randomly in a way that in a way that is independent of the keys that are actually going to be stored okay so it means that let's suppose this is a box right and number of hash functions are present in this so we choose the hash function randomly randomly right we choose the hash function randomly from this you know universal hash function box and that hash function should be independently of the keys that are actually going to be stored means that i want to store this key so we i'm going to you know randomly choose the hash function it can be anything randomly choose the hash function and i'm going to apply here and uh, after applying this the result will came and from at that particular position i'm going to place that particular key so this is the hash a universal hashing in that case the number of expected collision is going to be very 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 less so according to the universal hashing algorithm this is this is a theorem it's not algorithm this is a theorem in which it states that if h is chosen from a universal collection of hash function agar humne yahan se koi hash function ko choose kiya and it is used to hash n keys into a table of size m it means the size of the table is m where number of keys are less than the size of the m agar hamara size uh, let's suppose the size of the memory is table is 10 then the size or you can say the number of keys which is present number of keys should be less than 10 it can be 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 right so the expected number of collision involving a particular key x is less than how much so in that case the expected number of collision involving a particular key particular key x is less than 1 so 1 is the correct option so this is a theorem this is a universal hashing theorem okay so first uh in 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 the initial case we are using only uh, one hash functions for all the keys but the problem is call uh, that particular hash functions always uh, for some particular keys like particular keys like 121 131 151 161 all are placed at block 1 so it causes collision so to resolve this problem we are using this universal hashing theorem it states that independent of the key you are chosen choose the hash function in the in the this box universal hashing function box and result is the expected number of collision for any particular key x is very less is very less it means that is less than 1 so 24 questions of answer is 1 now question number 25 is which of the following statements is false so the first statement is optimal binary search tree constructions can be performed efficiently using dynamic programming so this statement is true because an optimal binary search tree uh, you know all the nodes of this binary search tree are arranged on a level wise so that you know the tree cost should be minimum so we are using this binary search tree in the all the dynamic programming to find the minimum cost so yes this is true now the next is bfs cannot be used to find connected component of a graph so first thing is just remember this bfs and dfs binary first first tree and the dfs depth first tree are both used to find are both used to find 
कनेक्टेड कंपोनेंट कनेक्टेड कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ अ ग्राफ कनेक्टेड कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ अ ग्राफ सो दिस स्टेटमेंट इज फॉल्स एंड दैट फॉल्स यू कैन बी यूज टू फाइंड द कनेक्टेड कंपोनेंट ऑफ अ ग्राफ दिस इज ट्रू सो इन द बी एफ एस so we can uh, you know we can randomly select a sort source vertex and run bfs algorithm let's suppose uh, some vertex are there in the in a graph and we choose uh, this is a source right and we run the bfs algorithm so bfs algorithm first initialized you know finite value to all the rest of the vertex and the source distance is zero initially so after that we need to check each vertex whether it distance from the source is finite or not right so after applying this we find out that still the distance from uh, the source to that particular node is uh, infinite or not if it is infinite then it means that this node is not connected to the this source node so we can say that it is not a connected graph so this is how we are going to uh, identify whether uh, this graph is connected uh, is connected or not now the given the prefix and postfix walks of a binary tree the tree cannot be reconstructed uniquely and um, actually this statement is wrong because to add to you know to define the tree uniquely we are using the reorder in order traversing and this is post order and in order not prefix or postfix walks of a tree so we are using this traversal in the tree so that your tree is uniquely identified so c is the uh, wrong option so the correct one is option third now question number 26 is match the following layers and protocols for a user browsing with ssl now the first one is application layer you know that the application layer uh, provide uh, you can say the application layer produce the data which has to be transferred over the network so for that we need this kind of protocol the hypertext transfer protocol in right so the hypertext transport protocol is the right option now the next one is transport layer transport layer is responsible for end to end delivery for complete message let's suppose this is a network and this is a another network and this is the host which is present in this network and this is the host which is present in this network and there is some process is going on in in this uh, uh, host so the this end to end delivery is the responsibility of transport protocol and transport protocol services provided by transport protocol like tcp and udp so in this case it may be the tcp or udp so if we are using the tcp then uh, it's a connection oriented service so uh, this is a three tcp is a three phase uh, uh, three phase process in which the first phase is it connect is can establish the connection in the next step it data transfer and in the after transferring the data it disconnect or terminate the connection and there is udp also so udp is a connection less service and there is only one phase process so according to the need according to our requirement we use this transport layer protocol so tcp is the transport layer protocol now the next one is network layer so network layer is used for the transmission of data from one host to another host host which is located on in either in a in a, in a different network so host to host delivery so from ho this host to host it provides by the network layer right so in order to identify each host in that particular uh, network we need some addressing and that addressing we call ip address so that so that we uniquely identify this particular host in this network so many you know computers are there so how we are going to find out yes to this particular person we have to transfer the data so with the help of ip address i am going to be able to identify so ip is the protocol for network layer and the next one is data link layer so responsibility of uh, data layer is for node to node delivery of message so main function of this layer is to make sure that data transfer is error free from one node to another so uh, there is some nodes in between so node to node delivery is the responsibility of data link layer and in this case it uses the point point to point protocol so this is a uh, full form is point to point protocol so point to point, uh, point protocol its functionality is used to establish uh, establish a direct connection between the two nodes so two nodes is here so it uh, you know establish it establish 
a direct connection a direct connection between two nodes okay so point to point is used over many types of you can say the physical network which is include several uh, you can say serial cables phone lines or in the you can say in the isp internet service provider used point to point protocol for customer dial up access uh, uh, the internet so in that case we are using the point to point protocol okay so point to point protocol is a data link layer so on the correct matching is a is four and uh, b is first c is second and d is third so option first is the right one now the question number 27 is the maximum size of data that the application layer can pass on to the tcp layer below is actually the all the options are wrong the reason is if this is the application layer and if this is a transport layer and in above different layers are there like network layer data link layer right like this so if application layer send some data to the tcp layer so in that case it can send uh, any size of the data right so there is no limit that define the size of the uh, data in this case because and but in this case in this layer uh, yes the, the there is a limit of the data but from application to transport layer there is no limit you can application layer can send any size of the data there is no limit there is a uh, no limit this question is already asked in uh, gate 2008 then net 2016 december 2018 and then 2017 so it's question, this question is quite important but all the options are not correct because the correct option is any size okay in gate 2008 is in the official answer key the answer is this one okay so this is the correct answer